Welcome back everybody to Grand Tactician The Civil War. If you haven't seen the series up to this point, there's a link in the description that will take you back to the beginning, to episode one. Uh, we are now in July of 1862, and I am working on trying to get my army built back up to a similar size to what the Confederates have put together because they have passed the draft, which I am also going to be working on now. Uh, they are laying siege right now to Fort Caswell uh, here near Wilmington, North Carolina. I'm trying to get some additional reinforcements there. Uh, right now I've got 1,700 men and 30 guns. I've got an additional uh, 3,000 men and another battery on the way, and I think that's going to hold. His army of the Etowah is going to eventually have 26,000 men, but I'm hoping 5,000 can hold that fort. I guess we'll see. Okay, looking over this way, uh, we have an army. That's McClellan's army. That is the army of the Kanawas down here in Knoxville. And to increase the flow of supplies, because we've got a real issue right now with things like food, we're working on a supply depot. It's going to be ready in 13 days. We also have the railroad through the Cumberland Gap that can be constructed. So we're going to go ahead and start that. Uh, once you control the connecting areas, you can start building that, and that will increase the trade flow, supply, and unit transport speed in that area. Uh, you can see McClellan's going through some really difficult, issues with manpower right now same thing we're dealing with all throughout the west we're waiting for this supply depot to be constructed in Cairo uh, which hopefully should help with the extreme issues we're dealing with with the army of the Ohio uh, he's down to just 12,000 men right now uh, we're working on getting that reinforced same with the army of the west we've got Grant's army of the Tennessee over here all facing some supply issues I'm gonna go grab this supply depot over here if I can We'll send Gibbons Corps to deal with that. How are we doing with our siege? 50% chance of success. It's uh, going to be the end of the month at least before we get any more manpower into Fort Caswell. So we're down to 1,700 men right now. Okay, in the meantime, since he's still heavily loaded out west with his armies, we're going to go ahead and make some moves here in the east. I'm going to send Wadsworth Second Corps down the Shenandoah Valley to take these food supplies from the Confederates. Once we have done that, we're going to go ahead and start bringing the Army of the Potomac down south toward Richmond. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and shift the 5th Corps down a little bit. Let's bring the headquarters down. Get the 3rd Corps a little closer where the 1st Corps is. Confederate recruits offered bounties that's going to only improve the number of men. They have about 40,000 more men in the field than I do right now. Uh, but that is mostly due to the fact that he has already passed conscription, and we're still 16 days away from doing that. McClellan's now at 12,000 disabled. All right, we've got a battle here. Major advantage for us. We're taking on the Eastern armies. And like I said, he's he's shifted a lot of his men. He's got more men in the field than I do overall, but he's got most of them out west or down in the south laying siege to that fort. So that gives me an advantage in Virginia right now. All right, so we're on the Chancellorsville battlefield. Uh, I'm going to split my 5th Corps, which is all I have on the field right now, into two. Uh, we're going to move forward through Chancellorsville here. Uh, and then we're going to work the other division over. I want to see what the numbers look like right now. We've, we've got a 2 to 1 advantage as of now, so we want to hit them and hit them hard. I'm going to go ahead and start moving on these objectives as quickly as I can. It's going to take a while to get George Thomas's orders to him just because he's kind of off in his own direction. We've got all the artillery over on this side too. Let's get that op up into this open field here. So we can use it. Okay, so we're grabbing some objective points and still no sight of the enemy. Okay, here he is. All right, so it looks like Thomas may make first contact out on our right wing. That's going to be interesting. Uh, let's go ahead and see if we can move into position up here. And again, it's going to take a while for him to get those orders because he's out on the fringes of our army. That means Cadwallader... We're going to have to, let's move him up to Catherine Furnace, grab that objective, and then see if we can swing him around. I don't know if these are just reinforcements coming in for the Confederates, or if this is his main body. He doesn't have any reinforcements yet. 
two hours when the South Carolina State Militia will arrive. And they're going to either come from down here or over here. All right, we need Thomas to get moving. As soon as we capture this objective, we'll bring Blair's division around, bring them in right here on the left side. Okay, so Thomas is getting into position. We're going to bring Blair up on his left. I'm trying to move McDowell up in that direction so he can be close to, to give orders. Although those orders are going through wool anyway, so it's really wool that I need to be closer. Cadwallader's going in to, toward Captain or Catherine Furnace now. And uh, Wagner's 3rd Brigade is going to make first contact. Next to him, we've got Weeds, 155th Pennsylvania. We've got our artillery moving into position, hopefully to support this now. I think they're going to need to be a little closer, though. Let's get these Napoleons up to the Wilderness Church. Let me take a look and see when my reinforcements are supposed to arrive. He's got some coming in an hour. Four hours and six hours for my two other corps. I'm going to hold tight. I'm tempted to swing this uh, these brigades around. But I'm going to hold tight because we've got Blair's division coming in on the left side. See if we can get these three inch guns up. Appalachian bushwhackers are coming in first. Cadwallader, we can go ahead and start bringing him up. Actually, I'm a little tempted to park him on the objective right here just because if his reinforcements come this way this is their likely route, uh, route toward the rear of my force and I feel like these two divisions can handle things over here we got some more Napoleons here I might see if I can't bring them up here So Blair's Tar Heel Boys coming in, 11,000 strong. Once they get in position, we'll move them up. Oh, we might not be able to wait for that. It looks like he's starting to move. Oh, the 18th North Carolina, back in their old stomping grounds where they historically mortally wounded Stonewall Jackson. I'm going to bring this cab up here just to help kind of protect these guns. They're taking some casualties. All right, you know what? I am going to go ahead and swing these guys around. Oh, somebody just arrived. That's probably his reinforcements, Beauregard. Yep. The question is where? I see that still only puts him up to about 20,000 men, though. Uh, let's go ahead and have Cadwallader put skirmishers out. And we're going to give him a defend stance. Just tell him to defend that position. Send out some skirmishers from Blair and Thomas. All right, 
right, we're gonna mount this cavalry. Ah, he's got a brigade right there, maybe not. Just thinking I'm gonna try to come up and drive off this, these guns. All right, how the numbers look so far? Actually pretty good in terms of casualties. Oh, he's pulling back. No, oh, I thought he was. Maybe not. Yeah, he's moving these guns forward. We're going to come up and hit him with, it, with our cavalry. Right in, boys. Take out those guns. There's only seven guns there. Ah, oh, come on. Are they still? They still have an evade order. I thought I turned that off. Let's try it again. Not so much for that. I guess we'll dismount and try it the old-fashioned way. Dang, that building's been destroyed by artillery. All right, let's bring the skirmishers in. Got to keep an eye out for his reinforcements because we don't know if they're coming from here, coming from here, or coming from down here. We haven't gotten ours yet. Okay, Thomas, let's move it up. I'm going to go ahead and tell Blair to attack. We're not going to wait for my other two corps to arrive to try and win this thing. Blair doing. He's shifting around a little bit. Hundred and fifty fifth Pennsylvania about to get a perk. We haven't had any units really get perks so far. Blair. We tried it. But let's just go back to how we did things before. I'm going to bring these guns up. Alright. No sign of them over here so far. So I'm thinking they're probably back here. I'm really hoping they're not over here. Because that'll mess me up a bit. Once we drive off this unit, I'll send Gibbs Cavalry over here just to make sure they're not coming down that road. Why are we not firing, boys? fired around yet. What is the deal? Really need you to be firing on them. There we go, he's broken. Okay, Gibbs. Over here.
I think we got him. Assault. Hit him. My first core arrived. I'm not going to need them, though. They're coming in from way down here. This is going pretty well. It's going real well. I still don't know why. Oh, that's because I gave Gibbs an order to pursue those guys. Which needs to stop now. Over here, please. Keep pushing Thomas forward. Okay. Let's bring up the whole first core. Just start sending them all in this direction for now. He's starting to withdraw. Okay, they were coming down this way. Okay. So they came in from right here. I don't remember seeing that one before, but that was the other entry point, and that's the one that they're using. All right, we're going to put Blair on a defensive line there. We're going to bring Cadwallader around. I guess we'll send him up to there for now. All right, Appalachian bush Bushwhackers are going in. Wagner's 3rd Brigade's low on ammo, so let's send him in on a charge, too. See if we can't drive off this brigade. Once we drive him off, we're going to put Blair up along this creek here. We'll bring Thomas up beside him. It's going to take a while for Cadwallader to get his orders and to get moving. Same thing with the first corps. They're going to be a while. We're just going to have to keep doing this with what we've got. There we go. we got green broken. Okay, now we build in along right here in case he decides to attack. And we bring Thomas up next to him. Okay, so Cadwallader's division is actually going to run into the enemy over here. We are trying to send him on an end around, but that's not happening because he made contact. So Cadwallader is going to pull his division in right there. Again, we should not need them. I'm trying to bring up my artillery here. Looks like Green's still stuck in that spot. Oh man, he's got quite a bit over here too. We might redistribute where we send some of the first corps men. Let's find a division of the first corps, displaced royal division. Let's send them over to Catherine Furnace to help out. We'll continue to send the rest this way. Third Corps just arrived. Where are they coming in? Yep, right behind the first. That's going to give me a pretty, pretty solid advantage in numbers. Honestly, winning this battle is pretty much going to open the door to Richmond, I think. While we're waiting for our divisions to get into place, I'm just looking at the 5th Corps because that's where all the casualties have been so far. 
uh, and we're just looking at their numbers overall. And so far, the Tar Heel boys have taken the most killed with 231 uh, out of their almost 10,000 men. Second division, you can see the units there. 29% losses for the 3rd Brigade. Pretty high by comparison with everybody else. Among the Tar Heel boys, 22% for the Wilmington Buffaloes. It's Wagner's brigade with the Sharps rifles. That's why they're low on ammunition. We gave them Sharps rifles and they just run out of ammo real fast. We probably got to switch them over to something different. I think this is probably going to move into the next day just because it's going to take some time to get redeployed and finish them off. Looks like the lead unit of First Corps is arriving, but they're awfully tired. After all the marching they're having to do, we're really stretched out. Okay, we're on to day two. I have no idea why my cavalry is all the way up there, the Colorado light foot. Actually, that's an infantry unit. I have no idea how they ended up over there. I couldn't pull them back in my redeployment. I'm going to start pushing Cadwallader's division forward. It shifted back from minor victory to indecisive overnight. Mainly because he recovered a lot of his morale. And it's still going to take a while for me to get all these reinforcements up and into position. Okay, Cadwallader's division's coming in on his right flank. I've got an ad additional division here. The Displaced Royal Division, they're going to come in and kind of bridge the gap between the two. Looks like the Wilmington Buffaloes, who've already been pretty heavily engaged, are going to be engaged even further here. We're going to try to get them some, some help as quick as we can. He looks like he's starting to withdraw some of his troops. All right, Kedwalader, let's push out even further. Let's lay into him. I'm going to swing. Oh, 155th Pennsylvania's got a perk. Let's give them deadly volley. I like that idea. Oh, they are still coming in over here. So let's hold tight. Hold up, weed. All right, I got Tyler's division over here. Let's get them into a single line. They've only got 5,800 men. Welsh right there. Once Tyler gets his men into a single line, we'll push them up. We got a lot more reinforcements on the way. Let's get some more guns up here. Who's losing men? Adams. Oh, the Wilmington Buffaloes, they've already suffered a lot of casualties. Oh, man, yeah. All right, let's pull them back. Oh, all right, 20th Maine to the front. Joshua Chamberlain. I just asked too much of the Wilmington Buffaloes. Alright Chamberlain, get your main boys up there. First first combat for them. George Thomas needs to get behind the line. Okay, McGinnis is coming in. I still need Welsh to slide over so Chamberlain can come up right here.
Come on, Welsh. Over there. More artillery moving up. Man, I can't believe how many casualties this Confederate army is taking without withdrawing. Because he's lost 7,000 men, 18,000 available. 28%. And the numbers have actually gotten pretty even now. There we go. Broke another one. All right, there we go. I figured that would happen. Chamberlain, Burnside, and company took care of them. Let's get Cadwallader moving again. Move McGinnis forward in a double line. And then we just got to kind of hold everywhere else, I think. Oh, did we just lose somebody? Wagner. Yeah, they lost a lot of men. All right, you know what, Welsh? Why don't you move in over there? Since I can't get you to do anything else right. We're up to major victory now. I think he's going to start pulling back. Yep, there he goes. Sweet. Okay, 9,500 casualties for the Confederates, 6,900 for me. I believe that's probably going to open the door for us to march on Richmond as most of his troops are still out in the West where he does have a distinct advantage and we're going to have a lot of work to do over there. But if we can take and hold Richmond, our job gets a whole lot easier in the future. Glorious victory at Gordonsville. So right now he's still got about 30,000 more men in the field than we do. So uh, we're still waiting on that policy, the Enrollment Act. We've got 15 days left. That's going to make a big difference because, number one, it's going to allow new recruits, uh, new draftees, I should say. But then more importantly, it's going to give me a 50% bonus to how fast uh, replacements get into the Army. And that's going to help a lot. So we're going to send 1st and 3rd Corps down to secure Richmond. We're going to hold the 5th Corps right here. Looks like the Army of Georgia, 15,000 strong, is moving up toward the 2nd Corps uh, to counter his move on New Market. How are things going for the Army of the Kanawha? All right, so he's lost a lot of men. Food is still a major issue. I'm hoping the moment this supply depot's done and this railroad is constructed that's going to help a lot let's see what happens with mcclellan's food supply because we may have to pull him back all right we're going to upgrade this thing i don't know that supply actually deals with food i think that's kind of a separate thing i think we're going to have to pull mcclellan back Let's pull him back to Harrodsville, or Harrodsburg, Kentucky. What's going on? Fort Caswell is still besieged. I mean, Georgia just marched right past me. Looks like he did. So let's go ahead and pursue back up with the Second Corps. And we're waiting for these corps to start making their move on Richmond. We'll keep the Army of the Potomac headquarters right where it is. All right, what's the problem here? Why are we having trouble moving? Food, again, an issue. We need to secure this. Uh, we need to secure West Point so supplies can flow in from the sea. I 
I'd like to get Fort Monroe re enforced as well. Okay, we're now we're up to 231. We're starting to get some more manpower into some of these units. All right, Richmond's about to fall. That'll be huge for us. Certainly is going to kill his morale. There it is. Richmond Falls, Confederate capital taken. Southerners in shock. All right, and well, we've actually already grabbed West Point. So now we can sit tight there. We've got that. So we should be able to keep these guys well supplied. Let's upgrade the supply depot just to be safe. Somehow the third core is getting cut off, and that is not good. Or the second core, I should say. Fifth Corps, we're going to hold tight right, right where they are. Harney's Army of the West is looking pretty good at the moment, so we're going to send them back up to St. Louis. Uh, and then their job is going to be to move down into southwest Missouri and eventually northern Arkansas. We're going to continue to hold tight along the southern border of Kentucky. Uh, I'm sending McClellan all the way back to Louisville. He's still got food issues, and I have no idea why. There's the Enrollment Act. That's huge. Keeping an eye on the money situation. We're going to do government funding too next. But let's take a look now. We've got 240,000 men in the field. We as the Union should have significantly more than he does. So let's look and see. Now we've got 58,000 recruits. No draftees yet, but that's going to start building up here very shortly. Uh, financially, we've got a lot of money still going into recruitment. We can't do anything with agriculture. Maybe that's my issue with food. Okay, and just like that, now you can see we've got 785,000 volunteers available as well as almost a million available by the draft. Now we can start building up this army. Okay, it's August 1862. Army of the West is still moving up towards St. Louis. Uh, we got to start building up this supply depot a little higher for the area in and around Cairo. Uh, Army of the Ohio is looking pretty good. I think we'll go ahead and start moving them a little bit south. I'm still, still waiting on this Mississippi squadron to get functional. It's taken the better part of a year to do that. They're at 85% on these two Ironclad River gunboats now. Man, it's taken forever to do that. I wonder if there's a, any way at all to build up how fast that happens doesn't seem like there is all right we're waiting on McClellan to get some reinforcements so we can start moving him south and then we'll start making a move on Nashville Grant's gonna have about 53,000 men to take on Crutchfield's army and the others that are there you can see now the manpower almost even we need to start passing him up in that manpower things are pretty solid in richmond i think i'm going to go ahead and move on petersburg take that rail junction we'll hold the first core where they are see if we can grab these plantations confederacy passes the tariff act that siege of Fort Caswell is still going on. He hasn't had any luck there at all. I don't know why we're not engaging the Army of Georgia, but we're going to go ahead and wrap it up right there. A lot happened, even though we fought just the one battle. We're starting to strategically get the pieces in place. Uh, we'll secure Virginia. We'll move on a wide front down from Kentucky into Nashville, so, uh, or into Tennessee, so no matter where he goes, he won't have an option. But I'm only going to do that and you can see most of his men are down around Corinth and uh, Memphis. So we're only going to do that once we actually have a brown water fleet that can deal with his New Orleans squadron, which only has 19 guns. All right, let me know your thoughts. Use the comment section below, and we will see you again in a couple of days with another episode. Thanks for watching.